we got a little first year fetish happening here. Um, so <laughs> what we've seen really this year and in the last couple of years, we've seen a pretty big uptick in the ability for rookie wide receivers to contribute immediately, not only to their teams, but to our fantasy squads. Um, so maybe this isn't a question for this particular year, but how you're going to attack things going forward. Um, do you think that moving forward, for from a fantasy perspective next year that you need to have a piece of that first year fetish on your roster. Um, and do you have, how are you feeling about these guys going into the playoffs? You want to start Drew or do you want me to go? You can go. Cause you have something lined this up. My, I, yeah. 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 So, here, so I, I saw something on Twitter that made me want to talk about this on here. Uh, if you go back to the last three years now, you look at 2020, Lead winners, Justin Jefferson, Brandon Ayuk, CeeDee Lamb, they all came on during the year. Last year, we obviously had Jamar Chase. I was kind of expected though, when he spent a fifth-round pick. But yeah. Amon Ross St. Brown obviously stepping up uh, and becoming the player that he did. This year, we've seen what Garrett Wilson and Chris Olave have done for a majority of the season, especially when Zach Wilson's not on the field to hinder Garrett Wilson. But how about a guy like Christian Watson, what he's done down the stretch now? What's he got, eight touchdowns already? Yeah, are you uh, swiping and- right on him now, Joe? No. You still on, You're still swiping left? No, I'm not going to change. <laughs> but I, I think that this is a trend that we need to watch just because we always talk about how good these receivers are coming into the lead. And it's been a big topic because it's like, do you want to pay your top receivers or let them walk and just draft a guy because they're so pro ready now? Uh, if I am somebody that's looking at next year's draft class and you got Jordan Addison coming in, obviously didn't had a little bit of a down year at USC, but still super talented. I think that was just a product of injuries um, season that he had. Quentin Johnston as well at TCU is going to be a stud, in my opinion. Even like Jackson Smith and Jigba, who who might be profile more as like a slot at the NFL level just due to size. Um, and he didn't play much this year either. But these are guys that I'm circling for next year going into dynasty leagues and saying, I want this guy on my team, and even in redraft, because how many of these receivers are actually going to be taken as wide receiver ones and maybe even as wide receiver twos? Um, you know, because like other names that I just mentioned, Jamar Chase, because he went fifth overall, was probably the only one that somebody was drafting and immediately thinking, like, this is my wide receiver two for my fantasy team. Well, it's interesting, too, because Chase, he fell hard, like not so much yeah. in dynasty drafts because they have those happen yeah. pretty early. But like, remember last year when it was like, oh, man, like this guy can't catch a pass. Like he fell to like the eighth or ninth rounds. And then if you got him, it was like such a steal. Um, but yeah, it's it's really weird. Like if you think about like historically, like how people viewed like wide receiver development, it was. Okay, they like the third year breakout. That's when they finally put things together. Like the first year, they kind of do like special teams or they're like the fourth wide receiver on the squad. Second year, they get like a little taste of what's going on. But like year three, like that's when they put all the pieces together. Like these dudes like walk on the field day one and are able to get stuff done. It's it's really amazing. Yeah. Uh, to, to Chad's point, because he just brought up like about fading it hard for next year specifically. Um there's not going to be a perfect storm where such a deep class is also slotting into open number one roles. I will say like, I, I, I haven't watched a ton of this receiving class yet. I don't love it, but I, I also didn't necessarily love the class that just came in last year either. Like I had, I really liked Garrett Wilson. I thought he was like my number one clear cut. And I didn't think there was another like number one receiver on like the rest of the way down. I thought they were all number twos or number threes on NFL rosters. So I wasn't even that high on last year's. And, and like I said, look at the production that we're getting already from these guys. And I think Drake London's been very good too. It's just obviously playing in a really bad passing offense. It's it's hard to tell now. Um, my strategy has always been to attack these first year wide receivers because I, I feel like they just always come on late. I've been doing this since Victor Cruz just came out of nowhere with the Giants years and years and years ago. You They're are old, Jesus Christ! <laughs> you, you know who Victor Cruz is. You're old. Too. Hold on, hold on. Yeah, Let me go grab a butterscotch candy. <laughs> 